It's a long weekend here in Canada this weekend. Me long weekend. So to celebrate a rainy May long weekend, I am going to do a bonus mailbag Monday with these four things here. Oh, let's get started. Let's start with this one. Five times DNFC 12C06. Doesn't ring any bells at all. Oh, more clippy clips for this is the ones that I mentioned that I had ordered more of in the last video for this project these ones came with insulated handles whereas the previous ones are basically the same thing they'll take a banana jack in there but uh, hmm okay I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use now but I think I've got everything that I ordered for that that project which is the helping hand state project uh, because I'm tired of this floppy old helping hands and probably still going to use it but something more infinitely positionable might be cool to have so that's what I'm doing let's check and uh, see what I paid for these ones five ten twenty pieces color random clip test probe electrical jumper plastic handle I ordered five pieces for one whole dollar Canadian uh, from seller IMAX81 and I doubt that there's much to say well they actually have a lot to say about them the color is random I happen to get the red ones uh, and not much else to say about them brand new high quality plastic metal blah 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 next in we have silicon clips hmm could that be silicon chips or something no no they are clips oh these are uh okay these are some mounting clips for led strip oh and they are soft flexible silicon as well that's neat hang on let me get a strip here So even though these LED strips are adhesive backed, the adhesive is not always trustworthy. Oh. So I was thinking of throwing a few of these clips over top, but those leave a lot of room to be uh, in there. Hang on, let me find a weatherproof outdoor strip. Now that's still pretty loosey-goosey. I guess it would stop it from completely falling off, but oh well, not exactly what I expected, but uh, I think they'll serve the purpose nonetheless. Um, they are part of my plan to use, uh, I think it's actually this strip, for under, uh, under cabinet lighting in the kitchen. So I can probably just put those on and that'll stop them sagging down when and if the uh, Looks sort of like 3M, but probably is fake. Uh, adhesive fails. Okay, I ordered these many months ago. And they've been sitting in my inbox for a while. Uh, actually, not that long. It took 70 days for them to get here. Um, but I got these from Little Dot Apple 2014. They're no longer on my list that I can click on and show you the exact listing. I got them 58 cents for the 10 of them. Um, but I'll include a link down below that finds a search of similar items uh, many of which are more expensive but that's just the way it is you can search through there we go 100 pieces for 99 cents that's a pretty good deal okay next in this one actually came from Germany which is kind of surprising and it's pots four pots so let's See what kind of pot I'm ordering from Germany. Oh, potentiometers. Oh, specifically, what do I got here? A500K, two of those, and B500K. So two audio taper or logarithmic taper and two linear taper. And I ordered these specifically to replace the pots in my 1970s vintage uh, pawn shop special guitar 
which are all scratchy and whatnot because they're ancient and I assume the previous owner cleaned them with some random crud and uh, it's just an easy upgrade. So that's a peek at a future project. Let's see how much I got these from. Made in China, shipped from Germany. Hmm. Two pieces A500K, two pieces B500K guitar pots, full size, short split shaft potentiometers from IKN Music. And it says these are located in Shenzhen, China, which is what I expected. So for the four of them, $6.42, which is a little bit expensive by my normal standard, but for what they are, they are in a reasonable price range. Yeah, these guys are selling two pieces each uh, for about the same price. 100% brand new, perfect for electric guitar and bass building, or repairing in my case. Full size short split shaft with coarse narrowing, 6mm shaft diameter. So, 500k ohms, type A and type B. Package includes, there we go. And the last package, which according to this has two times plastic sheet. One, uh, one times plastic sheet, one times plastic sheet, and two times plastic sheet. Um, let's see what all this sheet is. Bubble pack. Oh! Oh, a bunch of stuff. Yay! Okay. First of all, um, got these super mini breadboards and a little mounting thing for these. Wow, how long ago did I order these? These took, well, I think, I think, well, I'll have to figure it out when I look at the listing, but I think these took forever to get here. So, these little guys just click into there wherever you want just to hold them, um, so that you can have multiples of them together. And I do have other breadboards, other of these little breadboards here. Let me see if I can find them quickly. Yeah, I got an assortment pack of those mini mailbags back. So that's basically the same ones. Um, and how they are wired internally is in five columns. So that's a strip together. That's a strip together. These are good just for having off to the side for connecting whatever random other thing to. I don't know. I've used them a couple of times just for power, just for like a power bus. Just uh, plugged a couple of jumper wires in there and a few of these so then I can have a bunch of extra power leads running off to various modules and stuff. So that's that's a really cool thing. Let's check that out on the listing. Yeah, those did take a long time to get here. They took a little over three months. Wow. Um, anyway, a mini 25 tie point breadboard, proto board, so dre so dear uh, plus pcb adapter board poor arduino there we go vague french ish going on there huh uh, from diy dash electronic which is going to be who sent everything that's in that package that we'll see later um two dollars and 51 cents canadian for these guys the uh little breadboards themselves are buck 27 just for the set and uh, where are we and the baseboard is also a dollar 27 independently in case you cared okay alongside of those in the same package from the same vendor got oh, a couple of kits and some kind of a module let's look at the kits first are they the same Yes, they are, and it said there was two times one of the items on the package, so they actually weren't lying. They were just being really, really vague. So, what do we have in here? Circuit board, big capacitor, smaller capacitors, 5-pin TO220 device, which is a... 
it is a TDA2030A. The only devices that I'm familiar with that come in a 5 pin of that uh, are an amplifier type IC. And on the board, it does have that labeled as an IC. You got an in and an out and a DC. That's looking suspiciously like an audio amplifier circuit. Oh wow, there's even a little heatsink isolator. And a screw and no nut and a little okay, a little top hat isolator. So what that's for, for anybody who hasn't worked with TO220s before. You put yonder screw through there and through there and you see the little turret that goes through the hole so that it doesn't short to the screw like that and you put this little electrical insulator thermal conductor on there and then you bolt it to a much larger heat sink which isn't included in the kit but that's okay because I have heat sinks which means this guy is going to throw or draw some power here. Let's see what the schematic looks like. So there's the board assembled. Um, parts list in bits of Chinese and little bits of English. And the schematic. We have an input through a capacitor. We go through the amplifier. Um, some feedback components surrounding the amplifier and out to a speaker that is in fact an audio amplifier is there a variable resistor with it no there isn't and there isn't showing one here huh so on the on the power in there's a uh, reverse voltage protection diode which is nice a couple of capacitors to ground one larger value one tiny value to one to smooth out the big ripples and one to uh, smooth out the grass that's nice and there's our audio input weirdly drawn so that's that's gonna be fun to play with and i got two of them which means i have stereo amplification once i put this together excellent let's go see what i paid for them tda 2030a diy electronic power amplifier board mono 18 watts dc 9 to 24 volt kit from diy dash electronic we knew that they are $1.63 each, and I bought two of them, so you can do your own math. Thank you very much. Uh, from China, Hong Kong. And yeah, that looks like it. Does it say much about it down here? Uh, ah, the TDA-2030A is widely used as a hi-fi amplifier manifold in many computer active speakers. I would like an, a hi-fi amplifier manifold. Hmm. Out the power, maximum 18 watts. Okay, 4 to 8 ohm speaker output. Signal to noise. Um, 94 dB at 1 watt. 106 dB at 15 watt. Hmm. And let's actually, let's take a look over here at uh, the uh, data sheet. 18 watt hi-fi amplifier and 35 watt driver. That's odd. But this typical application straight out of the data sheet looks an awful lot like the schematic included with my uh, kits. So that's cool. Um, what do we have here? There's a test circuit, which again is almost exactly the same. Supply voltage, 22 volts. Um, storage temperature, that doesn't matter. Tip, total power dissipation, 20 watts. Okay. So what else can we see in here that's interesting? Output power for frequency response of 40 hertz to 15, 150. We don't know how many zeros is that. 15 kilohertz, okay. So it's not super hi-fi. Um, I mean, the classic is 20 to 20. Uh, 
20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Well, this isn't bad. You would want to use it for a subwoofer, maybe. And the last thing out of there is this little module, which does it say what it is? Let's zoom in a little bit here and focus. So VCC ground as usual, clock data, e, hmm, serial clock, serial data, E data, E clock, uh, sync. Oh, see this little X, Y, Z? That's going to be an accelerometer. That's what that is. And we can look up the part number. Actually, let's just see what's going on here. So that looks like it's calling itself an MP65. Okay, and on the back, so a GY and then all of these different numbers. Uh, oh, uh, 6500 is where the little dot is. Okay, to the listing. And again from DIY Electronic. MPU 6500, MPU 6050, 6-axis gyro XL sensor replace. MPU replaces the other ones with a very similar part number. Um, I bought this one for $2.83 Canadian with free shipping. And, oh, we have a whole bunch of stuff down there. Awesome. 16-bit analog to digital converter. And outputs from 3-axis accelerometer and 3-axis gyro. Gyroscope. The chip is an MPU 6500. Yes, it is. It speaks either I2C or SPI. Um, accelerate, accelerometer, uh, plus or minus 2G, plus or minus 4G, 8G and 16G forces. Okay. Um, it speaks over the serial interface at 400 kilohertz. Uses very few milliamps when it's working and very, very few microamps when it's just idling. And all this other stuff, you can follow the link down below. I'm not going to read it all to you. Or you can just pause and read it over my shoulder, which is cool too. So in order to play with this thing, I'm obviously going to have to break out an Arduino and find a library, and hopefully it has good demo software with it. Because as we all know, I suck horrendously at coding. I can copy and paste out of a, out of a demo sketch, but that's about it. So, we'll play with this sometime in the near future. And there we go, with just a bonus Mailbag Monday. Handy for your shop stock. There's a project, there's a project. Future kit build project. Future tinkering with project. And this, I think, is the last thing I need for the kitchen project to make my wife a happy girl. That's cool. All right. And since it's the long weekend, I'm not going to uh, waste too much more time sitting down here in the basement. I think the rain has stopped outside, so I'm going to go and uh, do what one does on a long weekend. Thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.